Hi, I'm Garth McKenzie from traderscorner.co.za and this is your first look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indices for this year, 2021. So let's get it started. Let's take a look as we always do at the daily chart of the S&P 500 to get this video started. We look at that and uh, at the end of last year, I identified a larger triangle pattern which was breaking to the upside and then there was also a smaller little pennant pattern in November which also broke to the upside and that projected further gains. The market did continue higher into the end of the year and it ended December pretty much on the high of the year for a nice healthy gain over the course of the year. Now, what was interesting is that yesterday's candle, that's Monday this week, saw a fairly big bearish engulfing candle pattern form. And um, that, you know, we don't want to say that that's a top because that might be a little bit too presumptuous, but that was quite a meaningful reversal on the day. And um, and also it comes on the back of a period where we've seen negative, rever a negative divergence forming on the stochastic oscillator as well. So it does maybe suggest that this market is just running out of steam on the up Side to some extent, and we need to maybe be a little bit cautious as we head into the rest of this month. But time will tell. Certainly, the moving averages are still pointing up. We've got the 50 day moving average pointing up, the 15 day exponential moving average pointing up, and the price action is above all of those moving averages as well. So, whilst that is the case, I guess one does have to still give the bullish bias the benefit of the doubt. But do just keep in mind that that bearish engulfing candle was quite notable on Monday this week. If we then take a look at the hourly chart of the S&P 500, this just shows that trading action a little bit more detailed in the recent past. Um, 37.25 is a big level. It was a fairly significant support level in the final week of 2020, and that level was broken to the downside with yesterday's sell-off. So now uh, 37.25 now becomes resistance into any further strength. And then down at the lower levels, we've got 36.40, which comes in as a fairly strong region region of lateral support. So I think for now, those are the levels to watch. 36.40 on the downside, 37.25 on the upside. If 37.25 fails at the upper levels, then one might see another leg to the downside. And we could track that range between 36.40 and 36.25. Uh, then let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. We start with a look at the daily chart. Towards the end of last year, I pointed out that the break above 12,200 here was bullish and that it opened potential for further gains. The market has gone higher, like the S&P 500, it ended pretty much on the high of the year. But again, yesterday, Monday, we saw a bearish engulfing candle form on the NASDAQ, and that was quite a meaningful reversal. So we've got to just keep in mind that that might be a precursor to a little bit more uh, consolidation type activity in the weeks ahead. Then let's take a look at the hourly chart of the NASDAQ. And here you can see that the upward trend from early December was broken to the downside with yesterday's sell-off on the market. 12,800 is a big level here. It was support in the final week of 2020. That support is now broken to the downside. So it suggests that the next support is at 12,500. So we've got to watch those levels. Um, 12,800 is now resistance. 12,500 is support. The market possibly tracks in that range in the week ahead. And then we see whether it is able to push back up to fresh new highs or whether that 12,800 region holds as resistance. That's all I've got for you this week. I'll be back again next week with another look at the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 indices.